Chapter 1. These are the names of the children of Israel that went into Egypt with Jacob, they went in every man with his household. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zabulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Nephthali, Gad and Azar. And all the souls that came out of Jacob's thigh were seventy, but Joseph was in Egypt. After he was dead, and all his brethren, and all that generation, the children of Israel increased and sprung up into multitudes, and growing exceedingly strong they filled the land. In the meantime, there arose a new king over Egypt that knew not Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold the people of the children of Israel are numerous and stronger than we. Come let us wisely oppress them, lest they multiply, and if any war shall rise against us, join with our enemies, and having overcome us, depart out of the land. Therefore, he set over them masters of the works, to afflict them with burdens, and they built for Pharaoh cities of tabernacles, Pitham, and Ramses. But the more they oppressed them, the more they were multiplied and increased. And the Egyptians hated the children of Israel and afflicted them and mocked them. And they made their life bitter with hard works in clay and brick, and with all manner of service, wherewith they were overcharged in the works of the earth. And the king of Egypt spoke to the midwives of the Hebrews, of whom one was called Sephora, the other Poah commanding them, When you shall do the office of midwives to the Hebrew women, and the time of delivery is come, if it be a man-child, kill it, if a woman, keep it alive. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded, but saved the men children. They answered, The Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they themselves are skillful in the office of a midwife, and they are delivered before we come to them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew exceedingly strong. And because the midwives feared God, he built them houses. Pharaoh therefore charged all his people, saying, Whatsoever shall be born of the male sex, ye shall cast into the river, whatsoever of the female, ye shall save alive. Chapter 2. After this there went a man of the house of Levi, and took a wife of his own kindred. And she conceived, and bore a son, and seeing him a goodly child, hid him three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took a basket made of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and pitch, and put the little babe therein, and laid him in the sedges by the river's brink. His sister standing afar off, and taking notice what would be done. And behold the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself in the river, and her maids walked by the river's brink. And when she saw the basket in the sedges she sent one of her maids for it, and when it was brought, she opened it, and seeing within it an infant crying, having compassion on it, she said, This is one of the babes of the Hebrews. And the child's sister said to her, Shall I go, and call to thee a Hebrew woman, to nurse the babe? She answered, Go. The maid went and called her mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child, and nurse him for me, I will give thee thy wages. The woman took and nursed the child, and when he was grown up, she delivered him to Pharaoh's daughter. And she adopted him for a son, and called him Moses, saying, Because I took him out of the water. In those days, after Moses was grown up, he went out to his brethren, and saw their affliction, and an Egyptian striking one of the Hebrews, his brethren. And when he had looked about this way and that way, and saw no one there, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And going out the next day, he saw two Hebrews quarreling, and he said to him that did the wrong, Why strikest thou thy neighbor? But he answered, Who hath appointed thee prince and judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst yesterday kill the Egyptian? Moses feared, and said, How is this come to be known? And Pharaoh heard of this word and sought to kill Moses, but he fled from his sight, and abode in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. And the priest of Midian had seven daughters, who came to draw water, and when the troughs were filled, desired to water their father's flocks. And the shepherds came and drove them away, and Moses arose, and defending the maids, watered their sheep. They answered, A man of Egypt delivered us from the hands of the shepherds, and he drew water also with us, and gave the sheep to drink. But he said, Where is he? Why have you let the man go? call him that he may eat bread. And Moses swore that he would dwell with him. And he took Zipporah his daughter to wife, and she bore him a son, whom he called Gersam, saying, I have been a stranger in a foreign country. And she bore another, whom he called Eliezer, saying, For the God of my father, my helper, hath delivered me out of the hand of Pharaoh. Now after a long time the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel groaning, cried out because of the works, and their cry went up unto God from the works. And he heard their groaning, and remembered the covenant which he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord looked upon the children of Israel, and he knew them. Chapter 3. Now Moses fed the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he drove the flock to the inner parts of the desert and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. And the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he saw that the bush was on fire, and was not burnt. 
And Moses said, I will go, and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he went forward to see, he called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he answered, Here I am. And he said, Come not nigh hither, put off the shoes from thy feet, for the place, whereon thou standest, is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he durst not look at God. And the Lord said to him, I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of the rigor of them that are over the works, and knowing their sorrow, I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, into a land that floweth with milk and honey, to the places of the Canaanite, and Hittite, and Amorite, and Perizzite, and Hivite, and Jebusite. For the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have seen their affliction, wherewith they are oppressed by the Egyptians. But come, and I will send thee to Pharaoh, that thou mayst bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said to him, I will be with thee, and this thou shalt have for a sign that I have sent thee, when thou shalt have brought my people out of Egypt, thou shalt offer sacrifice to God upon this mountain. Moses said to God, Lo, I shall go to the children of Israel, and say to them, The God of your fathers hath sent me to you. If they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, He who is, hath sent me to you. And God said again to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me to you, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather together the ancients of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared to me, saying, Visiting I have visited you, and I have seen all that hath befallen you in Egypt. And I have said the word to bring you forth out of the affliction of Egypt, into the land of the Canaanite, and Hittite, and Amorite, and Perizzite, and Hivite, and Jebusite, to a land that floweth with milk and honey. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go, but by a mighty hand. For I will stretch forth my hand, and will strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in the midst of them, after these he will let you go. And I will give favor to this people, in the sight of the Egyptians, and when you go forth, you shall not depart empty, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor, and of her that is in her house, vessels of silver and of gold, and raiment, and you shall put them on your sons and daughters, and shall spoil Egypt. Chapter 4. Moses answered, and said, They will not believe me, nor hear my voice, but they will say, The Lord hath not appeared to thee. Then he said to him, What is that thou holdest in thy hand? He answered, A rod. And the Lord said, Cast it down upon the ground. He cast it down, and it was turned into a serpent, so that Moses fled from it. And the Lord said, Put out thy hand, and take it by the tail. He put forth his hand, and took hold of it, and it was turned into a rod. That they may believe, saith he, that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared to thee. And the Lord said again, Put thy hand into thy bosom. And when he had put it into his bosom, he brought it forth leprous as snow. And he said, Put back thy hand into thy bosom. He put it back, and brought it out again, and it was like the other flesh. If they will not believe thee, saith he, nor hear the voice of the former sign, they will believe the word of the latter sign. But if they will not even believe these two signs, nor hear thy voice, take of the river water, and pour it out upon the dry land and whatsoever thou drawest out of the river, shall be turned into blood. Moses said, I beseech thee, Lord, I am not eloquent from yesterday and the day before, and since thou hast spoken to thy servant, I have more impediment and slowness of tongue. The Lord said to him, Who made man's mouth? Or who made the dumb and the deaf, the seeing and the blind? Did not I? Go therefore, and I will be in thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt speak. But he said, I beseech thee, Lord, send whom thou wilt send. The Lord being angry at Moses, said, Aaron the Levite is thy brother, I know that he is eloquent, behold he cometh forth to meet thee, and seeing thee, shall be glad at heart. Speak to him, and put my words in his mouth, and I will be in thy mouth, and in his mouth, and will shew you what you must do. He shall speak in thy stead to the people, and shall be thy mouth, but thou shalt be to him in those things that pertain to God. And take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do the signs. And the Lord said to Moses, in Midian, Go, and return into Egypt, for they are all dead that sought thy life. Moses therefore took his wife, and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and returned into Egypt, carrying the rod of God in his hand. 
And the Lord said to him as he was returning into Egypt, See that thou do all the wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand, I shall harden his heart, and he will not let the people go. And thou shalt say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. I have said to thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me, and thou wouldst not let him go, behold I will kill thy son, thy firstborn. And when he was in his journey, in the inn, the Lord met him, and would have killed him. Immediately Sephora took a very sharp stone, and circumcised the foreskin of her son, and touched his feet, and said, A bloody spouse art thou to me. And he let him go after she had said, A bloody spouse art thou to me, because of the circumcision. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the desert to meet Moses. And he went forth to meet him in the mountain of God, and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord, by which he had sent him, and the signs that he had commanded. And they came together, and they assembled all the ancients of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had said to Moses, and he wrought the signs before the people. And the people believed. And they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, and falling down they adored. Chapter 5 After these things, Moses and Aaron went in and said to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may sacrifice to me in the desert. But he answered, Who is the Lord, that I should hear his voice, and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath called us, to go three days' journey into the wilderness, and to sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest a pestilence or the sword fall upon us. The king of Egypt said to them, Why do you Moses and Aaron draw off the people from their works? Get you gone to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, The people of the land are numerous, you see that the multitude is increased, how much more if you give them rest from their works? Therefore, he commanded the same day the overseers of the works and the taskmasters of the people, saying, You shall give straw no more to the people to make brick, as before, but let them go and gather straw. And you shall lay upon them the task of bricks, which they did before, neither shall you diminish anything thereof, for they are idle, and therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let them be oppressed with works, and let them fulfill them, that they may not regard lying words. And the overseers of the works and the taskmasters went out and said to the people, Thus saith Pharaoh, I allow you no straw, go, and gather it where you can find it, neither shall anything of your work be diminished. And the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather straw. And the overseers of the works pressed them, saying, Fulfill your work every day, as before ye were wont to do, when straw was given you. And they that were over the works of the children of Israel were scourged by Pharaoh's taskmasters, saying, Why have you not made up the task of bricks, both yesterday and today, as before? And the officers of the children of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why dealest thou so with thy servants? Straw is not given us, and bricks are required of us as before, behold we, thy servants, are beaten with whips, and thy people is unjustly dealt with all. And he said, You are idle, and therefore you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. And the officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in evil case because it was said to them, There shall not a whit be diminished of the bricks for every day. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood over against them as they came out from Pharaoh, and they said to them, The Lord see and judge because you have made our savour to stink before Pharaoh and his servants, and you have given him a sword to kill us. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why hast thou afflicted this people? Wherefore hast thou sent me? For since the time that I went into Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath afflicted thy people, and thou hast not delivered them. Chapter 6 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord that appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, and my name Adonai I did not show them. And I made a covenant with them, to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage wherein they were strangers. I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, wherewith the Egyptians have oppressed them, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord who will bring you out from the work prison of the Egyptians, and will deliver you from bondage, and redeem you with a high arm, and great judgments. And I will take you to myself for my people, I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from the work prison of the Egyptians, and brought you into the land, concerning which I lifted up my hand to give it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it you to possess, I am the Lord. And Moses told all this to the children of Israel, but they did not hearken to him, for anguish of spirit, and most painful work. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go in, and speak to Pharaoh king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. Moses answered before the Lord, Behold the children of Israel do not hearken to me, and how will Pharaoh hear me, especially as I am of uncircumcised lips? 
And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, and he gave them a charge unto the children of Israel, and unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, that they should bring forth the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their houses by their families. The sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel, Hanak and Palu, Hezron and Carmi. These are the kindreds of Reuben. The sons of Simeon, Jamuel and Jamin, and Ahad, and Jachin, and Zohar, and Saul the son of a Canaanitess, these are the families of Simeon. And these are the names of the sons of Levi by their kindreds, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were a hundred and thirty-seven. The sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimi, by their kindreds. The sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi. These are the kindreds of Levi by their families. And Amram took to wife Jacobed his aunt by the father's side, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of Amram's life were a hundred and thirty-seven. The sons also of Azar, Korah, and Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons also of Uzziel, Mishael, and Elzaphan, and Sithri. And Aaron took to wife Elishabah the daughter of Ammonadab, sister of Nashon, who bore him Nadab, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar. The sons also of Korah, Asur, and Elkanah, and Abiasaph. These are the kindreds of the Korahites. But Eleazar the son of Aaron took a wife of the daughters of Pudiel, and she bore him Phinehas. These are the heads of the Levitical families by their kindreds. These are Aaron and Moses, whom the Lord commanded to bring forth the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their companies. These are they that speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, in order to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt, these are that Moses and Aaron, in the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak thou to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to thee. And Moses said before the Lord, Lo I am of uncircumcised lips, how will Pharaoh hear me? Chapter 7 and the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I have appointed thee the God of Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak to him all that I command thee, and he shall speak to Pharaoh, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. But I shall harden his heart, and shall multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. And he will not hear you, and I will lay my hand upon Egypt, and will bring forth my army and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by very great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, who have stretched forth my hand upon Egypt, and have brought forth the children of Israel out of the midst of them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord had commanded, so did they. And Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty-three, when they spoke to Pharaoh. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh shall say to you, Show signs, thou shalt say to Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it down before Pharaoh, and it shall be turned into a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and did as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron took the rod before Pharaoh and his servants, and it was turned into a serpent. And Pharaoh called the wise men and the magicians, and they also by Egyptian enchantments and certain secrets, did in like manner. And they every one cast down their rods, and they were turned into serpents, but Aaron's rod devoured their rods. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not hearken to them, as the Lord had commanded. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he will not let the people go. Go to him in the morning, behold he will go out to the waters, and thou shalt stand to meet him on the bank of the river, and thou shalt take in thy hand the rod that was turned into a serpent. And thou shalt say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews sent me to thee, saying, Let my people go to sacrifice to me in the desert, and hitherto thou wouldst not hear. Thus therefore saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Behold I will strike with the rod, that is in my hand, the water of the river, and it shall be turned into blood. The Lord also said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch forth thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, and upon their rivers, and streams and pools, and all the ponds of waters, that they may be turned into blood, and let blood be in all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and of stone. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord had commanded, and lifting up the rod, he struck the water of the river before Pharaoh and his servants, and it was turned into blood. And the fishes that were in the river died, and the river corrupted, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river, and there was blood in all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of the Egyptians with their enchantments did in like manner, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hear them, as the Lord had commanded. And he turned himself away, and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to it this time also. And all the Egyptians dug round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fully ended, after that the Lord struck the river. Chapter 8 And the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, and thou shalt say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go to sacrifice to me. But if thou wilt not let them go, behold I will strike all thy coasts with frogs. And the river shall bring forth an abundance of frogs, which shall come up and enter into thy house, and thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, 
and into the houses of thy servants, and to thy people, and into thy ovens, and into the remains of thy meats, and the frog shall come into thee, and to thy people, and to all thy servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand upon the streams, and upon the rivers and the pools, and bring forth frogs upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched forth his hand upon the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up, and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians also, by their enchantments, did in like manner, and they brought forth frogs upon the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron, and said to them, Pray ye to the Lord to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Set me a time when I shall pray for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, that the frogs may be driven away from thee and from thy house, and from thy servants, and from thy people, and may remain only in the river. And he answered, Tomorrow. But he said, I will do according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like to the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy house, and from thy servants, and from thy people, and shall remain only in the river. And Moses and Aaron went forth from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord for the promise, which he had made to Pharaoh concerning the frogs. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, and out of the villages, and out of the fields, and they gathered them together into immense heaps, and the land was corrupted. And Pharaoh seeing that rest was given, hardened his own heart, and did not hear them, as the Lord had commanded. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch forth thy rod, and strike the dust of the earth, and may there be sinnefs in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Aaron stretched forth his hand, holding the rod, and he struck the dust of the earth, and there came sinnefs on men and on beasts, all the dust of the earth was turned into sinnefs through all the land of Egypt. And the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had commanded. The Lord also said to Moses, Arise early, and stand before Pharaoh, for he will go forth to the waters, and thou shalt say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go to sacrifice to me. But if thou wilt not let them go, behold I will send in upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy houses, all kind of flies, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with flies of divers kinds, and the whole land wherein they shall be. And I will make the land of Goshen wonderful in that day, so that flies shall not be there, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people, tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. And there came a very grievous swarm of flies into the houses of Pharaoh and of his servants, and into all the land of Egypt, and the land was corrupted by this kind of flies. And Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron, and said to them, Go and sacrifice to your God in this land. And Moses said, It cannot be so, for we shall sacrifice the abominations of the Egyptians to the Lord our God, now if we kill those things which the Egyptians worship, in their presence, they will stone us. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness, and we will sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go to sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, but go no farther, pray for me. And Moses said, I will go out from thee, and will pray to the Lord, and the flies shall depart from Pharaoh, and from his servants, and from his people tomorrow, but do not deceive any more, in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh, and prayed to the Lord. And he did according to his word, and he took away the flies from Pharaoh, and from his servants, and from his people, there was not left so much as one. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, so that neither this time would he let the people go. Chapter 9 And the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, and speak to him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go to sacrifice to me. But if thou refuse, and withhold them still, behold my hand shall be upon thy fields, and a very grievous murren upon thy horses, and asses, and camels, and oxen, and sheep. And the Lord will make a wonderful difference between the possessions of Israel and the possessions of the Egyptians, that nothing at all shall die of those things that belong to the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a time, saying, Tomorrow will the Lord do this thing in the land. The Lord therefore did this thing the next day, and all the beasts of the Egyptians died, but of the beasts of the children of Israel there died not one. And Pharaoh sent to see, and there was not anything dead of that which Israel possessed. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes out of the chimney, and let Moses sprinkle it in the air in the presence of Pharaoh. And be there dust upon all the land of Egypt, for there shall be boils and swelling blains both in men and beasts, in the whole land of Egypt. And they took ashes out of the chimney, and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it in the air, and there came boils with swelling blains in men and beasts. Neither could the magicians stand before Moses, for the boils that were upon them, and in all the land of Egypt. 
and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, Arise in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and thou shalt say to him, Thus saith the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go to sacrifice to me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayst know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand to strike thee, and thy people, with pestilence, and thou shalt perish from the earth. And therefore have I raised thee, that I may show my power in thee, and my name may be spoken of throughout all the earth. Dost thou yet hold back my people, and wilt thou not let them go? Send therefore now presently, and gather together thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field, for men and beasts, and all things that shall be found abroad, and not gathered together out of the fields which the hail shall fall upon, shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among Pharaoh's servants, made his servants and his cattle flee into houses, but he that regarded not the word of the Lord, left his servants, and his cattle in the fields. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch forth thy hand towards heaven, that there may be hail in the whole land of Egypt upon men, and upon beasts, and upon every herb of the field in the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightnings running along the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. And the hail and fire mixed with it drove on together, and it was of so great bigness, as never before was seen in the whole land of Egypt since that nation was founded. And the hail destroyed through all the land of Egypt all things that were in the fields, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field, and it broke every tree of the country. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, the hail fell not. And Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron, saying to them, I have sinned this time also, the Lord is just, I and my people, are wicked. Pray ye to the Lord that the thunderings of God and the hail may cease, that I may let you go, and that ye may stay here no longer. Moses said, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will stretch forth my hands to the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, and the hail shall be no more, that thou mayst know that the earth is the Lord's, but I know that neither thou, nor thy servants do yet fear the Lord God. The flax therefore, and the barley were hurt, because the barley was green, and the flax was now bald, but the wheat and other winter corn were not hurt, because they were late ward. And when Moses was gone from Pharaoh out of the city, he stretched forth his hands to the Lord, and the thunders and the hail ceased, neither did there drop any more rain upon the earth. And Pharaoh seeing that the rain, and the hail, and the thunders were ceased, increased his sin, and his heart was hardened, and the heart of his servants, and it was made exceeding hard, neither did he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses. Chapter 10 And the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I may work these my signs in him, and thou mayst tell in the ears of thy sons, and of thy grandsons, how often I have plagued the Egyptians, and wrought my signs amongst them, and you may know that I am the Lord. Therefore Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and said to him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long refusest thou to submit to me? Let my people go, to sacrifice to me. But if thou resist, and wilt not let them go, behold I will bring in tomorrow the locusts into thy coasts, to cover the face of the earth, that nothing thereof may appear, but that which the hail hath left may be eaten, for they shall feed upon all the trees that spring in the fields. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of thy servants, and of all the Egyptians, such a number as thy fathers have not seen, nor thy grandfathers, from the time they were first upon the earth, until this present day. And he turned himself away, and went forth from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall we endure this scandal? Let the men go to sacrifice to the Lord their God. Dost thou not see that Egypt is undone? And they called back Moses, and Aaron, to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, sacrifice to the Lord your God, who are they that shall go? Moses said, We will go with our young and old, with our sons and daughters, with our sheep and herds, for it is the solemnity of the Lord our God. And Pharaoh answered, So be the Lord with you, as I shall let you and your children go, who can doubt but that you intend some great evil? It shall not be so. But go ye men only, and sacrifice to the Lord, for this yourselves also desired. And immediately they were cast out from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch forth thy hand upon the land of Egypt unto the locust, that it come upon it, and devour every herb that is left after the hail. And Moses stretched forth his rod upon the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought a burning wind all that day, and night, and when it was morning, the burning wind raised the locusts. And they came up over the whole land of Egypt, and rested in all the coasts of the Egyptians, innumerable, the like as had not been before that time, nor shall be hereafter. And they covered the whole face of the earth, wasting all things. 
and the grass of the earth was devoured, and what fruit soever were on the trees, which the hail had left, and there remained not anything that was green on the trees, or in the herbs of the earth, in all Egypt. Wherefore Pharaoh in haste called Moses and Aaron, and said to them, I have sinned against the Lord your God, and against you. But now forgive me my sin this time also, and pray to the Lord your God, that he take away from me this death. And he made a very strong wind to blow from the west, and it took the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea, there remained not so much as one in all the coasts of Egypt. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, neither did he let the children of Israel go. Chapter 11 and the Lord said to Moses, Yet one plague more will I bring upon Pharaoh and Egypt, and after that he shall let you go, and thrust you out. Therefore thou shalt tell all the people, that every man ask of his friend, and every woman of her neighbor, vessels of silver and of gold. And the Lord will give favor to his people in the sight of the Egyptians. And Moses was a very great man in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and of all the people. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, At midnight I will enter into Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of the Egyptians shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sitteth on his throne, even to the firstborn of the handmaid that is at the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as neither hath been before, nor shall be hereafter. But with all the children of Israel there shall not a dog make the least noise, from man even to beast, that you may know how wonderful a difference the Lord mocketh between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants shall come down to me, and shall worship me, saying, Go forth thou, and all the people that is under thee, after that we will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh exceedingly angry. But the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not hear you, that many signs may be done in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all the wonders that are written, before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, neither did he let the children of Israel go out of his land. Chapter 12 and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be to you the beginning of months, it shall be the first in the months of the year. Speak ye to the whole assembly of the children of Israel, and say to them, On the tenth day of this month let every man take a lamb by their families and houses. But if the number be less than may suffice to eat the lamb, he shall take unto him his neighbor that joins to his house, according to the number of souls which may be enough to eat the lamb. And it shall be a lamb without blemish, a male, of one year, according to which right also you shall take a kid. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and the whole multitude of the children of Israel shall sacrifice it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood thereof, and put it upon both the side posts, and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh that night roasted at the fire, and unleavened bread with wild lettuce. You shall not eat thereof anything raw, nor boiled in water, but only roasted at the fire you shall eat the head with the feet and entrails thereof. Neither shall there remain anything of it until morning. If there be anything left, you shall burn it with fire. And thus you shall eat it, you shall gird your reins, and you shall have shoes on your feet, holding staves in your hands, and you shall eat in haste, for it is the phase, that is the passage, of the Lord. And I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and will kill every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments, I am the Lord. And the blood shall be unto you for a sign in the houses where you shall be, and I shall see the blood, and shall pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, when I shall strike the land of Egypt. And this day shall be for a memorial to you, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord in your generations, with an everlasting observance. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread, in the first day there shall be no leaven in your houses, whosoever shall eat anything leavened, from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall perish out of Israel. The first day shall be holy and solemn, and the seventh day shall be kept with the like solemnity, you shall do no work in them, except those things that belong to eating. And you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for in this same day I will bring forth your army out of the land of Egypt, and you shall keep this day in your generations by a perpetual observance. Seven days there shall not be found any leaven in your houses, he that shall eat leavened bread, his soul shall perish out of the assembly of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall not eat anything leavened, in all your habitations you shall eat unleavened bread. And Moses called all the ancients of the children of Israel, and said to them, Go take a lamb by your families, and sacrifice the face. And dip a bunch of hyssop in the blood that is at the door, and sprinkle the transom of the door therewith, and both the door cheeks, let none of you go out of the door of his house till morning. For the Lord will pass through striking the Egyptians, and when he shall see the blood on the transom, and on both the posts, he will pass over the door of the house, and not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses and to hurt you. Thou shalt keep this thing as a law for thee and thy children forever. And when you have entered into the land which the Lord will give you, as he hath promised, you shall observe these ceremonies. 
And when your children shall say to you, What is the meaning of this service? You shall say to them, It is the victim of the passage of the Lord, when he passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, striking the Egyptians, and saving our houses. And the people bowing themselves, adored. And the children of Israel going forth, did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass at midnight, the Lord slew every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive woman that was in the prison, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh arose in the night, and all his servants, and all Egypt, and there arose a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house wherein there lay not one dead. And Pharaoh calling Moses and Aaron, in the night, said, Arise and go forth from among my people, you and the children of Israel, go, sacrifice to the Lord as you say. Your sheep and herds take along with you, as you demanded, and departing bless me. And the Egyptians pressed the people to go forth out of the land speedily, saying, We shall all die. The people therefore took dough before it was leavened, and tying it in their cloaks, put it on their shoulders. And the children of Israel did as Moses had commanded, and they asked of the Egyptians vessels of silver and gold, and very much raiment. And the Lord gave favor to the people in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them, and they stripped the Egyptians. And the children of Israel set forward from Ramesses to Sokoth, being about six hundred thousand men on foot, beside children. And a mixed multitude, without number, went up also with them, sheep and herds, and beasts of divers kinds, exceeding many. And they baked the meal, which a little before they had brought out of Egypt in dough, and they made hearth cakes unleavened, for it could not be leavened, the Egyptians pressing them to depart, and not suffering them to make any stay, neither did they think of preparing any meat. And the abode of the children of Israel that they made in Egypt, was four hundred and thirty years. Which being expired, the same day all the army of the Lord went forth out of the land of Egypt. This is the observable night of the Lord, when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, this night all the children of Israel must observe in their generations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the service of the phase, no foreigner shall eat of it. But every bought servant shall be circumcised, and so shall eat. The stranger and the hireling shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten, neither shall you carry forth of the flesh thereof out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. All the assembly of the children of Israel shall keep it. And if any stranger be willing to dwell among you, and to keep the phase of the Lord, all his males shall first be circumcised, and then shall he celebrate it according to the manner, and he shall be as he that is born in the land, but if any man be uncircumcised, he shall not eat thereof. The same law shall be to him that is born in the land, and to the proselyte that sojourneth with you. And all the children of Israel did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And the same day the Lord brought forth the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their companies. Chapter 13 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me every firstborn that openeth the womb among the children of Israel, as well of men as of beasts, for they are all mine. And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came forth out of Egypt, and out of the house of bondage, for with a strong hand hath the Lord brought you forth out of this place, that you eat no leavened bread. This day you go forth in the month of new corn. And when the Lord shall have brought thee into the land of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to thy fathers that he would give thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, thou shalt celebrate this manner of sacred rites in this month. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be the solemnity of the Lord. Unleavened bread shall you eat seven days, there shall not be seen anything leavened with thee, nor in all thy coasts. And thou shalt tell thy son in that day, saying, This is what the Lord did to me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be as a sign in thy hand, and as a memorial before thy eyes, and that the law of the Lord be always in thy mouth, for with a strong hand the Lord hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Thou shalt keep this observance at the set time from days to days. And when the Lord shall have brought thee into the land of the Canaanite, as he swore to thee and thy fathers, and shall give it thee, thou shalt set apart all that openeth the womb for the Lord, and all that is first brought forth of thy cattle, whatsoever thou shalt have of the male sex, thou shalt consecrate to the Lord. The firstborn of an ass thou shalt change for a sheep, and if thou do not redeem it, thou shalt kill it. And every firstborn of men thou shalt redeem with a price. And when thy son shall ask thee tomorrow, saying, What is this? Thou shalt answer him, With a strong hand did the Lord bring us forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For when Pharaoh was hardened, and would not let us go, the Lord slew every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of man to the firstborn of beasts, therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the womb of the male sex, and all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. And it shall be as a sign in thy hand, and as a thing hung between thy eyes, for a remembrance, because the Lord hath brought us forth out of Egypt by a strong hand. 
And when Pharaoh had sent out the people, the Lord led them not by the way of the land of the Philistines, which is near, thinking lest perhaps they would repent, if they should see wars arise against them, and would return into Egypt. And Moses took Joseph's bones with him, because he had adjured the children of Israel, saying, God shall visit you, carry out my bones from hence with you. And marching from Sokoth, they encamped in Etham, in the utmost coasts of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them to shew the way, by day in a pillar of a cloud, and by night in a pillar of fire, that he might be the guide of their journey at both times. There never failed the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, before the people. Chapter 14 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, let them turn and encamp over against Pihahirath, which is between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon, you shall encamp before it by the sea. And Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him, and took six hundred chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamped at the sea, by Pihahirath, in front of Baal-Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt, Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness. And it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Chapter 15 Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation, this is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them, they went down into the depths like a stone. 
Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty you overthrow your adversaries, you send out your fury, it consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils the waters piled up, the floods stood up in a heap, the deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed, you have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples have heard, they tremble, pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed, trembling seizes the leaders of Moab, all the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them, because of the greatness of your arm, they are still as a stone, till your people, O Lord, pass by, till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter, therefore it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. Chapter 16 and they set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, and the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we, that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded, Gather of it, each one of you, as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer, according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. 
and Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, as Moses commanded them, and it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord, today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place, let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded, let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, so that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar, and put an omer of manna in it, and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years, till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. An omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Chapter 17. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so, in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and her held up his hands, one on one side, and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, saying, A hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Chapter 18. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home, along with her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land, and the name of the other, Eliezer, for he said, The God of my father was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. And when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them in the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, in that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. 
Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because in this affair they dealt arrogantly with the people. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. The next day Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone, and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God, when they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Now obey my voice, I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God, and you shall warn them about the statutes and the laws, and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you, you will be able to endure, and all this people also will go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And they judged the people at all times. Any hard case they brought to Moses, but any small matter they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went away to his own country. Chapter 19 In the third month after the departure of Israel from the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. When Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot, whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be ready for the third day, do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai, to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to look and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down, and come up bringing Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Chapter 20 the Lord spoke all these words, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Thou shalt not make to thyself a graven thing, 
nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, nor of those things that are in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not adore them, nor serve them, I am the Lord thy God, mighty, jealous, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands to them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that shall take the name of the Lord his God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labor, and shalt do all thy works. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, thou shalt do no work on it, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy beast, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all things that are in them, and rested on the seventh day, therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thou mayst be long lived upon the land which the Lord thy God will give thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, neither shalt thou desire his wife, nor his servant, nor his handmaid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. And all the people saw the voices and the flames, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mount smoking, and being terrified and struck with fear, they stood afar off, saying to Moses, Speak thou to us, and we will hear, Let not the Lord speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that the dread of him might be in you, and you should not sin. Book of Exodus 91 And the people stood afar off. But Moses went to the dark cloud wherein God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver, nor shall you make to yourselves gods of gold. You shall make an altar of earth unto me, and you shall offer upon it your holocausts and peace offerings, your sheep and oxen, in every place where the memory of my name shall be, I will come to thee, and will bless thee. And if thou make an altar of stone unto me, thou shalt not build it of hewn stones, for if thou lift up a tool upon it, it shall be defiled. Thou shalt not go up by steps unto my altar, lest thy nakedness be discovered. Chapter 21 these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years shall he serve thee, in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. With what raiment he came in, with the like let him go out, if having a wife, his wife also shall go out with him. But if his master gave him a wife, and she hath borne sons and daughters, the woman and her children shall be her masters, but he himself shall go out with his raiment. And if the servant shall say, I love my master and my wife and children, I will not go out free, his master shall bring him to the gods, and he shall be set to the door and the posts, and he shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall be his servant for ever. If any man sell his daughter to be a servant, she shall not go out as bondwomen are wont to go out. If she displease the eyes of her master to whom she was delivered, he shall let her go, but he shall have no power to sell her to a foreign nation, if he despise her. But if he have betrothed her to his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. And if he take another wife for him, he shall provide her a marriage, and raiment, neither shall he refuse the price of her chastity. If he do not these three things, she shall go out free without money. He that strike the man with a will to kill him, shall be put to death. But he that did not lie in wait for him, but God delivered him into his hands, I will appoint thee a place to which he must flee. If a man kill his neighbor on set purpose, and by lying in wait for him, thou shalt take him away from my altar that he may die. He that strike his father or mother, shall be put to death. He that shall steal a man, and sell him, being convicted of the guilt, shall be put to death. He that curseth his father or mother, shall die the death. If men quarrel, and the one strike his neighbor with a stone, or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, he that struck him shall be quit, yet so that he make restitution for his work, and for his expenses upon the physicians. He that strike his bondman, or bondwoman, with a rod, and they die under his hands, shall be guilty of the crime. But if the party remain alive a day or two, he shall not be subject to the punishment, because it is his money. 92 Book of Exodus If men quarrel, and one strike a woman with child and she miscarry indeed, but live herself, he shall be answerable for so much damage as the woman's husband shall require, and as arbiters shall award. But if her death ensue thereupon, he shall render life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. If any man strike the eye of his manservant or maidservant, and leave them but one eye, he shall let them go free for the eye which he put out. Also if he strike out a tooth of his manservant or maidservant, he shall in like manner make them free. 
If an ox gore a man or a woman, and they die, he shall be stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But if the ox was wont to push with his horn yesterday, and the day before, and they warned his master, and he did not shut him up, and he shall kill a man or a woman, then the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. And if they set a price upon him, he shall give for his life whatsoever is laid upon him. If he have gored a son, or a daughter, he shall fall under the like sentence. If he assault a bondman or bondwoman, he shall give thirty less of silver to their master, and the ox shall be stoned. If a man open a pit, and dig one, and cover it not, and an ox or an ass fall into it, the owner of the pit shall pay the price of the beasts, and that which is dead shall be his own. If one man's ox gore another man's ox, and he die, they shall sell the live ox, and shall divide the price, and the carcass of that which died they shall part between them. But if he knew that his ox was wont to push yesterday, and the day before, and his master did not keep him in, he shall pay ox for ox, and shall take the whole carcass. Chapter 22. If a man steals an ox or a sheep, kills or sells it, he shall restore five oxen for one ox, and four sheep for one sheep. If a thief is found breaking open a house or undermining it, and is wounded so as to die, the one who slew him shall not be guilty of blood. But if he did this when the sun has risen, he has committed murder, and he shall die. If he does not have wherewith to make restitution for the theft, he shall be sold. If that which he stole is found with him, alive, either ox, or ass, or sheep, he shall restore double. If any man hurts a field or a vineyard, and puts in his beast to feed upon that which is other men's, he shall restore the best of whatsoever he has in his own field, or in his vineyard, according to the estimation of the damage. If a fire breaking out lights upon thorns, and catches stacks of corn, or corn standing in the fields, the one who kindled the fire shall make good the loss. If a man delivers money, or any vessel unto his friend to keep, and they are stolen away from him that received them, if the thief is found, he shall restore double. If the thief is not known, the master of the house shall be brought to the gods, and shall swear that he did not lay his hand upon his neighbor's goods, to do any fraud, either in ox, or in ass, or sheep, or raiment, or anything that may bring damage, the cause of both parties shall come to the gods, and if they give judgment, he shall restore double to his neighbor. If a man delivers an ass, ox, sheep, or any beast, to his neighbor's custody, and it dies, or is hurt, or is taken by enemies, and no man saw it, there shall be an oath between them, that he did not put forth his hand to his neighbor's goods, and the owner shall accept the oath, and he shall not be compelled to make restitution. But if it were taken away by stealth, he shall make the loss good to the owner. If it were eaten by a beast, let him bring to him that which was slain, and he shall not make restitution. If a man borrows from his neighbor any of these things, and it is hurt or dies, the owner not being present, he shall be obliged to make restitution. But if the owner is present, he shall not make restitution, especially if it were hired, and came for the hire of his work. If a man seduces a virgin not yet espoused, and lies with her, he shall endow her, and have her to wife. If the maid's father will not give her to him, he shall give money according to the dowry, which virgins are wont to receive. Wizards thou shalt not suffer to live. Whosoever copulates with a beast, shall be put to death. He that sacrifices to gods, shall be put to death, save only to the Lord. Thou shalt not molest a stranger, nor afflict him, for yourselves also were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not hurt a widow or an orphan. If you hurt them, they will cry out to me, and I will hear their cry, and my rage shall be enkindled, and I will strike you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor, that dwells with thee, thou shalt not be hard upon them as an extortioner, nor oppress them with usuries. If thou take of thy neighbor a garment in pledge, thou shalt give it him again before sunset. For that same is the only thing, wherewith he is covered, the clothing of his body, neither hath he any other to sleep in, if he cries to me, I will hear him, because I am compassionate. Thou shalt not speak ill of the gods, and the prince of thy people thou shalt not curse. Thou shalt not delay to pay thy tithes and thy firstfruits, thou shalt give the firstborn of thy sons to me. Thou shalt do the same with the firstborn of thy oxen also and sheep, seven days let it be with its dam, the eighth day thou shalt give it to me. You shall be holy men to me, the flesh that beasts have tasted of before, you shall not eat, but shall cast it to the dogs. Chapter 23. Thou shalt not receive the voice of a lie, neither shalt thou join thy hand to bear false witness for a wicked person. Thou shalt not follow the multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou yield in judgment, to the opinion of the most part, to stray from the truth. Neither shalt thou favor a poor man in judgment. If thou meet thy enemy's ox or ass going astray, bring it back to him. If thou see the ass of him that hates thee lie underneath his burden, thou shalt not pass by, but shalt lift him up with him. Thou shalt not go aside in the poor man's judgment. Thou shalt fly lying. 
The innocent and just person thou shalt not put to death, because I abhor the wicked. Neither shalt thou take bribes, which even blind the wise, and pervert the words of the just. Thou shalt not molest a stranger, for you know the hearts of strangers, for you also were strangers in the land of Egypt. Six years thou shalt sow thy ground, and shalt gather the corn thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it alone, and suffer it to rest, that the poor of thy people may eat, and whatsoever shall be left, let the beasts of the field eat it, so shalt thou do with thy vineyard and thy olive yard. Six days thou shalt work, the seventh day thou shalt cease, that thy ox and thy ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Keep all things that I have said to you. And by the name of strange gods you shall not swear, neither shall it be heard out of your mouth. Three times every year you shall celebrate feasts to me. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month of new corn, when thou didst come forth out of Egypt, thou shalt not appear empty before me. And the feast of the harvest of the first fruits of thy work, whatsoever thou hast sown in the field. The feast also in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in all thy corn out of the field. Thrice a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not sacrifice the blood of my victim upon leaven, neither shall the fat of my solemnity remain until the morning. Thou shalt carry the first fruits of the corn of thy ground to the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not boil a kid in the milk of his dam. Behold I will send my angel, who shall go before thee, and keep thee in thy journey, and bring thee into the place that I have prepared. Take notice of him, and hear his voice, and do not think him one to be contemned, for he will not forgive when thou hast sinned, and my name is in him. But if thou wilt hear his voice, and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy to thy enemies, and will afflict them that afflict thee. And my angel shall go before thee, and shall bring thee in unto the Amorite, and the Hethite, and the Phyrexite, and the Shannonite, and the Hevite, and the Jebusite, whom I will destroy. Thou shalt not adore their gods, nor serve them. Thou shalt not do their works, but shalt destroy them, and break their statues. And you shall serve the Lord your God, that I may bless your bread and your waters, and may take away sickness from the midst of thee. There shall not be one fruitless nor barren in thy land, I will fill the number of thy days. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and will turn the backs of all thy enemies before thee. Sending out hornets before, that shall drive away the Hevite, and the Shannonite, and the Hethite, before thou come in. I will not cast them out from thy face in one year, lest the land be brought into a wilderness, and the beasts multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee, till thou be increased, and dost possess the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Palestines, and from the desert to the river, I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hands, and will drive them out from before you. Thou shalt not enter into league with them, nor with their gods. Let them not dwell in thy land, lest perhaps they make thee sin against me, if thou serve their gods, which, undoubtedly, will be a scandal to thee. Chapter 24 He said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall worship from a distance. Moses alone shall come up to the Lord, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with him. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, We will do all the words of the Lord, which he has spoken. Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and rising in the morning, he built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the children of Israel, and they offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of calves to the Lord. Then Moses took half of the blood, and put it into bowls, and the rest he poured upon the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All things that the Lord has spoken, we will do, we will be obedient. He took the blood and sprinkled it upon the people, and he said, This is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet as it were a work of sapphire stone, and as the heaven, when clear. Neither did he lay his hand upon those of the children of Israel, that retired afar off, and they saw God, and they did eat and drink. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me into the mountain, and be there, and I will give you tables of stone, and the law, and the commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. Moses rose up, and his minister Josue, and Moses going up into the mountain of God, said to the elders, Wait here until we return to you. You have Aaron and her with you, if any question shall arise, you shall refer it to them. And when Moses was gone up, a cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt upon Sinai, covering it with a cloud six days, and the seventh day he called him out of the midst of the cloud. 
the sight of the glory of the Lord, was like a burning fire upon the top of the mountain, in the eyes of the children of Israel. Moses entering into the midst of the cloud, went up into the mountain, and he was there forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring firstfruits to me, of every man that offers of his own accord, you shall take them. These are the things you must take, gold, and silver, and brass, violet and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and violet skins, and set in wood, oil to make lights, spices for ointment, and for sweet-smelling incense, onyx stones, and precious stones to adorn the ephod and the rational. They shall make me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in the midst of them, according to all the likeness of the tabernacle which I will show you, and of all the vessels for the service thereof, and thus you shall make it, frame an ark of set in wood, the length whereof shall be of two cubits and a half, the breadth, a cubit and a half, the height, likewise, a cubit and a half. You shall overlay it with the purest gold, within and without, and over it you shall make a golden crown round about, and four golden rings, which you shall put at the four corners of the ark, let two rings be on the one side, and two on the other. You shall make bars also of set in wood, and shall overlay them with gold. You shall put them in through the rings that are in the sides of the ark, that it may be carried on them, and they shall be always in the rings, neither shall they at any time be drawn out of them. You shall put in the ark the testimony which I will give you. You shall make also a propitiatory of the purest gold, the length thereof shall be two cubits and a half, and the breadth a cubit and a half. You shall make also two cherubims of beaten gold, on the two sides of the oracle. Let one cherub be on the one side, and the other on the other. Let them cover both sides of the propitiatory, spreading their wings, and covering the oracle, and let them look one towards the other, their faces being turned towards the propitiatory wherewith the ark is to be covered in which you shall put the testimony that I will give you. Thence will I give orders, and will speak to you over the propitiatory, and from the midst of the two cherubims, which shall be upon the ark of the testimony, all things which I will command the children of Israel by you. You shall make a table also of set in wood, of two cubits in length, and a cubit in breadth, and a cubit and a half in height. You shall overlay it with the purest gold, and you shall make to it a golden ledge round about. And to the ledge itself a polished crown, four inches high, and over the same another little golden crown. You shall prepare also four golden rings, and shall put them in the four corners of the same table, over each foot. Under the crown shall the golden rings be, that the bars may be put through them, and the table may be carried. The bars also themselves you shall make of set in wood, and shall overlay them with gold, to bear up the table. You shall prepare also dishes, and bowls, censers, and cups, wherein the libations are to be offered, of the purest gold. You shall set upon the table loaves of proposition in my sight always. You shall make also a candlestick of beaten work, of the finest gold, the shaft thereof, and the branches, the cups, and the bowls, and the lilies going forth from it. Six branches shall come out of the sides, three out of one side, and three out of the other. Three cups as it were nuts to every branch, and a bowl withal, and a lily, and three cups likewise of the fashion of nuts in the other branch, and a bowl withal, and a lily. Such shall be the work of the six branches, that are to come out from the shaft, and in the candlestick itself shall be four cups in the manner of a nut, and at every one bowls and lilies. Bowls under two branches in three places, which together make six, coming forth out of one shaft. And both the bowls and the branches shall be of the same beaten work of the purest gold. You shall make also seven lamps, and shall set them upon the candlestick, to give light over against. The snuffers also, and where the snuffing shall be put out, shall be made of the purest gold. The whole weight of the candlestick, with all the furniture thereof, shall be a talent of the purest gold. Look, and make it according to the pattern that was shown you in the mount. Chapter 26. You shall construct the tabernacle in this manner, make curtains of fine twisted linen, and violet and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, diversified with embroidery. The length of one curtain shall be twenty-eight cubits, the breadth shall be four cubits. All the curtains shall be of one measure. Five curtains shall be joined one to another, and the other five shall be coupled together in like manner. You shall make loops of violet in the sides and tops of the curtains, that they may be joined one to another. Every curtain shall have fifty loops on both sides, so set on, that one loop may be against another loop, and one may be fitted to the other. You shall make also fifty rings of gold, wherewith the veils of the curtains are to be joined, that it may be made one tabernacle. You shall make also eleven curtains of goat's hair, to cover the top of the tabernacle. The length of one hair curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth, four, the measure of all the curtains shall be equal. Five of which you shall couple by themselves, and the six others you shall couple one to another, so as to double the sixth curtain in the front of the roof. 
you shall make also fifty loops in the edge of one curtain, that it may be joined with the other, and fifty loops in the edge of the other curtain, that it may be coupled with its fellow. You shall make also fifty buckles of brass, wherewith the loops may be joined, that of all there may be made one covering. And that which shall remain of the curtains, that are prepared for the roof, to wit, one curtain that is over and above, with the half thereof you shall cover the back parts of the tabernacle. And there shall hang down a cubit on the one side, and another on the other side, which is over and above in the length of the curtains, fencing both sides of the tabernacle. You shall make also another cover to the roof of ram skins dyed red, and over that again another cover of violet-colored skins. You shall make also the boards of the tabernacle standing upright of sedum wood. Let every one of them be ten cubits in length, and in breadth one cubit and a half. In the sides of the board shall be made two mortises, whereby one board may be joined to another board, and after this manner shall all the boards be prepared of which twenty shall be in the south side southward. For which you shall cast forty sockets of silver, that under every board may be put two sockets at the two corners. In the second side also of the tabernacle that looks to the north, there shall be twenty boards, having forty sockets of silver, two sockets shall be put under each board. But on the west side of the tabernacle you shall make six boards. And again other two which shall be erected in the corners at the back of the tabernacle. And they shall be joined together from beneath unto the top, and one joint shall hold them all. The like joining shall be observed for the two boards also that are to be put in the corners. And they shall be in all eight boards, and their silver sockets sixteen, reckoning two sockets for each board. You shall make also five bars of sedum wood, to hold together the boards on one side of the tabernacle. And five others on the other side, and as many at the west side, and they shall be put along by the midst of the boards, from one end to the other. The boards also themselves you shall overlay with gold, and shall cast rings of gold to be set upon them, for places for the bars to hold together the board work, which bars you shall cover with plates of gold. And you shall rear up the tabernacle according to the pattern that was shown you in the mount. You shall make also a veil of violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen, wrought with embroidered work and goodly variety, and you shall hang it up before four pillars of sedum wood, which themselves also shall be overlaid with gold, and shall have heads of gold, but sockets of silver. And the veil shall be hanged on with rings, and within it you shall put the ark of the testimony, and the sanctuary and the holy of the holies shall be divided with it. And you shall set the propitiatory upon the ark of the testimony, in the holy of holies. And the table without the veil, and over against the table the candlestick in the south side of the tabernacle, for the table shall stand in the north side. You shall make also a hanging in the entrance of the tabernacle of violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen with embroidered work. And you shall overlay with gold five pillars of sedum wood, before which the hanging shall be drawn, their heads shall be of gold, and the sockets of brass. Chapter 27. You shall make also an altar of sedum wood, which shall be five cubits long, and as many broad, that is four square, and three cubits high. And there shall be horns at the four corners of the same, and you shall cover it with brass. And you shall make for the uses thereof pans to receive the ashes, and tongs and flesh hooks, and fire pans, all its vessels you shall make of brass and a grate of brass in manner of a net, at the four corners of which, shall be four rings of brass, which you shall put under the hearth of the altar, and the grate shall be even to the midst of the altar. You shall make also two bars for the altar, of sedum wood, which you shall cover with plates of brass, and you shall draw them through rings, and they shall be on both sides of the altar to carry it. You shall not make it solid, but empty and hollow in the inside, as it was shown you in the mount. You shall make also the court of the tabernacle, in the south side whereof southward there shall be hangings of fine twisted linen of a hundred cubits long for one side, and twenty pillars with as many sockets of brass, the heads of which, with their engraving, shall be of silver. In like manner also on the north side there shall be hangings of a hundred cubits long, twenty pillars, and as many sockets of brass, and their heads with their engraving of silver. But in the breadth of the court, that looks to the west, there shall be hangings of fifty cubits, and ten pillars, and as many sockets. In that breadth also of the court, which looks to the east, there shall be fifty cubits. In which there shall be for one side, hangings of fifteen cubits, and three pillars, and as many sockets. And in the other side, there shall be hangings of fifteen cubits, with three pillars, and as many sockets. And in the entrance of the court there shall be made a hanging of twenty cubits of violet and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen, with embroidered work, it shall have four pillars, with as many sockets. All the pillars of the court round about shall be garnished with plates of silver, silver heads, and sockets of brass. In length the court shall take up a hundred cubits, in breadth fifty, the height shall be of five cubits, and it shall be made of fine twisted linen, and shall have sockets of brass. 
all the vessels of the tabernacle for all uses and ceremonies, and the pins both of it and of the court, you shall make of brass. Command the children of Israel that they bring you the purest oil of the olives, and beaten with a pestle, that a lamp may burn always, in the tabernacle of the testimony, without the veil that hangs before the testimony. And Aaron and his sons shall order it, that it may give light before the Lord until the morning. It shall be a perpetual observance throughout their successions among the children of Israel. Chapter 28 Take unto thee also Aaron thy brother with his sons, from among the children of Israel, that they may minister to me in the priest's office, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And thou shalt make a holy vesture for Aaron, thy brother, for glory, and for beauty. And thou shalt speak to all the wise of heart, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's vestments, in which he being consecrated, may minister to me. And these shall be the vestments that they shall make, a rational and an ephod, a tunic and a straight linen garment, a mitre and a girdle. They shall make the holy vestments for thy brother Aaron and his sons, that they may do the office of priesthood unto me. And they shall take gold, and violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, and violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen, embroidered with diverse colors. It shall have the two edges joined in the top on both sides, that they may be closed together. The very workmanship also, and all the variety of the work, shall be of gold, and violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones, and shalt grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six names on one stone, and the other six on the other, according to the order of their birth. With the work of an engraver, and the graving of a jeweler, thou shalt engrave them with the names of the children of Israel, set in gold and compassed about, and thou shalt put them in both sides of the ephod, a memorial for the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon both shoulders, for a remembrance. Thou shalt make also hooks of gold, and two little chains of the purest gold, linked one to another, which thou shalt put into the hooks. And thou shalt make the rational of judgment with embroidered work of diverse colors, according to the workmanship of the ephod, of gold, violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen. It shall be four square and doubled, it shall be the measure of a span both in length and in breadth. And thou shalt set in it four rows of stones. In the first row shall be a sardius stone, and a topaz, and an emerald, in the second a carbuncle, a sapphire, and a jasper, in the third a ligurius, an agate, and an amethyst, in the fourth a chrysolite, an onyx, and a beryl. They shall be set in gold by their rows. And they shall have the names of the children of Israel, with twelve names shall they be engraved, each stone with the name of one according to the twelve tribes. And thou shalt make on the rational chains, linked one to another, of the purest gold, and two rings of gold, which thou shalt put in the two ends at the top of the rational. And the golden chains thou shalt join to the rings, that are in the ends thereof. And the ends of the chains themselves, thou shalt join together with two hooks, on both sides of the ephod, which is towards the rational. Thou shalt make also two rings of gold, which thou shalt put in the top parts of the rational, in the borders that are over against the ephod, and look towards the back parts thereof. Moreover also other two rings of gold, which are to be set on each side of the ephod beneath, that looketh towards the nether joining, that the rational may be fitted with the ephod, and may be fastened by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a violet fillet, that the joining artificially wrought may continue, and the rational and the ephod may not be loosed one from the other. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the rational of judgment upon his breast, when he shall enter into the sanctuary, a memorial before the Lord for ever. And thou shalt put in the rational of judgment doctrine and truth, which shall be on Aaron's breast, when he shall go in before the Lord, and he shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel on his breast, in the sight of the Lord always. And thou shalt make the tunic of the ephod all of violet, in the midst whereof above shall be a hole for the head, and a border round about it woven, as is wont to be made in the outmost parts of garments, that it may not easily be broken. And beneath at the feet of the same tunic, round about, thou shalt make as it were pomegranates, of violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, with little bells set between, so that there shall be a golden bell and a pomegranate, and again another golden bell and a pomegranate. And Aaron shall be vested with it in the office of his ministry, that the sound may be heard, when he goeth in and cometh out of the sanctuary, in the sight of the Lord, and that he may not die. Thou shalt make also a plate of the purest gold, wherein thou shalt grave with engraver's work, holy to the Lord. And thou shalt tie it with a violet fillet, and it shall be upon the mitre, hanging over the forehead of the high priest. And Aaron shall bear the iniquities of those things, which the children of Israel have offered and sanctified, in all their gifts and offerings. And the plate shall be always on his forehead, that the Lord may be well pleased with them. 
and thou shalt gird the tunic with fine linen, and thou shalt make a fine linen mitre, and a girdle of embroidered work. Moreover, for the sons of Aaron thou shalt prepare linen tunics, and girdles and mitres for glory and beauty, and with all these things thou shalt vest Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him. And thou shalt consecrate the hands of them all, and shalt sanctify them, that they may do the office of priesthood unto me. Thou shalt make also linen breeches, to cover the flesh of their nakedness, from the reins to the thighs, and Aaron and his sons shall use them when they shall go into the tabernacle of the testimony, or when they approach to the altar to minister in the sanctuary. Lest being guilty of iniquity they die. It shall be a law for ever to Aaron, and to his seed after him. Chapter 29 And thou shalt also do this, that they may be consecrated to me in priesthood. Take a calf from the herd, and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, and a cake without leaven, tempered with oil, wafers also unleavened, anointed with oil, thou shalt make them all of wheat and flour. And thou shalt put them in a basket, and offer them, and the calf and the two rams. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of the testimony. And when thou hast washed the father and his sons with water, thou shalt clothe Aaron with his vestments, that is, with the linen garment and the tunic, and the ephod and the rational, which thou shalt gird with the girdle. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head, and the holy plate upon the mitre, and thou shalt pour the oil of unction upon his head, and by this rite shall he be consecrated. Thou shalt bring his sons also, and shalt put on them the linen tunics, and gird them with a girdle, to wit, Aaron and his children, and thou shalt put mitres upon them, and they shall be priests to me by a perpetual ordinance. After thou shalt have consecrated their hands, thou shalt present also the calf before the tabernacle of the testimony. And Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands upon his head, and thou shalt kill him in the sight of the Lord, beside the door of the tabernacle of the testimony. And taking some of the blood of the calf, thou shalt put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger, and the rest of the blood thou shalt pour at the bottom thereof. Thou shalt take also all the fat that covereth the entrails, and the call of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and shalt offer a burn offering upon the altar, but the flesh of the calf, and the hide and the dung, thou shalt burn abroad, without the camp, because it is for sin. Thou shalt take also one ram, upon the head whereof Aaron and his son shall lay their hands. And when thou hast killed him, thou shalt take of the blood thereof, and pour round about the altar. And thou shalt cut the ram in pieces, and having washed his entrails and feet, thou shalt put them upon the flesh that is cut in pieces, and upon his head. And thou shalt offer the whole ram for a burnt offering upon the altar, it is an oblation to the Lord, a most sweet savour of the victim of the Lord. Thou shalt take also the other ram, upon whose head Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands. And when thou hast sacrificed him, thou shalt take of his blood, and put upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and of his sons, and upon the thumbs and great toes of their right hand and foot, and thou shalt pour the blood upon the altar round about. And when thou hast taken of the blood that is upon the altar, and of the oil of unction, thou shalt sprinkle Aaron and his vesture, his sons, and their vestments. And after they and their vestments are consecrated, thou shalt take the fat of the ram, and the rump, and the fat that covereth the lungs, and the call of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and the right shoulder, because it is the ram of consecration, and one roll of bread, a cake tempered with oil, a wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread, which is set in the sight of the Lord. And thou shalt put all upon the hands of Aaron and of his sons, and shalt sanctify them elevating before the Lord. And thou shalt take all from their hands, and shalt burn them upon the altar for a holocaust, a most sweet savour in the sight of the Lord, because it is his oblation. Thou shalt take also the breast of the ram, wherewith Aaron was consecrated, and elevating it thou shalt sanctify it before the Lord, and it shall fall to thy share. And thou shalt sanctify both the consecrated breast, and the shoulder that thou didst separate of the ram, wherewith Aaron was consecrated and his sons, and they shall fall to Aaron's share, and his sons, by a perpetual right from the children of Israel, because they are the choicest and the beginnings of their peace victims which they offer to the Lord. And the holy vesture, which Aaron shall use, his sons shall have after him, that they may be anointed, and their hands consecrated in it. He of his sons that shall be appointed high priest in his stead, and that shall enter into the tabernacle of the testimony to minister in the sanctuary, shall wear it seven days. And thou shalt take the ram of the consecration, and shalt boil the flesh thereof in the holy place, and Aaron and his sons shall eat it. The loaves also, that are in the basket, they shall eat in the entry of the tabernacle of the testimony, that it may be an atoning sacrifice, and the hands of the offerers may be sanctified. A stranger shall not eat of them, because they are holy. And if there remain of the consecrated flesh, or of the bread, till the morning, thou shalt burn the remainder with fire, they shall not be eaten, because they are sanctified. All that I have commanded thee, thou shalt do unto Aaron and his sons. Seven days shalt thou consecrate their hands, 
and thou shalt offer a calf for sin every day for expiation. And thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast offered the victim of expiation, and shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days shalt thou expiate the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be most holy. Every one, that shall touch it, shall be holy. This is what thou shalt sacrifice upon the altar, two lambs of a year old every day continually, one lamb in the morning, and another in the evening. With one lamb a tenth part of flour tempered with beaten oil, of the fourth part of a hin, and wine for libation of the same measure. And the other lamb thou shalt offer in the evening, according to the rite of the morning oblation, and according to what we have said, for a savor of sweetness, it is a sacrifice to the Lord, by perpetual oblation unto your generations, at the door of the tabernacle of the testimony before the Lord, where I will appoint to speak unto thee. And there will I command the children of Israel, and the altar shall be sanctified by my glory. I will sanctify also the tabernacle of the testimony with the altar, and Aaron with his sons, to do the office of priesthood unto me. And I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who have brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might abide among them, I the Lord their God. Chapter 30. You shall also make an altar to burn incense, of set in wood. It shall be a cubit in length, and another in breadth, that is, for square, and two in height. Horns shall go out of the same. And you shall overlay it with the purest gold, as well the grate thereof, as the walls round about, and the horns. And you shall make to it a crown of gold round about, and two golden rings under the crown on either side, that the bars may be put into them, and the altar be carried. And you shall make the bars also of set in wood, and shall overlay them with gold. And you shall set the altar over against the veil, that hangs before the ark of the testimony before the propitiatory wherewith the testimony is covered, where I will speak to thee. And Aaron shall burn sweet-smelling incense upon it in the morning. When he shall dress the lamps, he shall burn it, and when he shall place them in the evening, he shall burn an everlasting incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer upon it incense of another composition, nor oblation, and victim, neither shall you offer libations. And Aaron shall pray upon the horns thereof once a year, with the blood of that which was offered for sin, and shall make atonement upon it in your generations. It shall be most holy to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you shall take the sum of the children of Israel, according to their number, every one of them shall give a price for their souls to the Lord, and there shall be no scourge among them, when they shall be reckoned. And this shall every one give that passes at the naming, half a cycle according to the standard of the temple. A cycle has twenty obols. Half a cycle shall be offered to the Lord. He that is counted in the number from twenty years and upwards, shall give the price. The rich man shall not add to half a cycle, and the poor man shall diminish nothing. And the money received, which was contributed by the children of Israel, you shall deliver unto the uses of the tabernacle of the testimony, that it may be a memorial of them before the Lord, and he may be merciful to their souls. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall make also a brazen laver with its foot to wash in, and you shall set it between the tabernacle of the testimony and the altar. And water being put into it, Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and feet in it, when they are going into the tabernacle of the testimony, and when they are to come to the altar, to offer on it incense to the Lord, lest perhaps they die. It shall be an everlasting law to him, and to his seed by successions. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take spices, of principal and chosen myrrh five hundred sickles, and of cinnamon half so much, that is, two hundred and fifty sickles, of calamus in like manner two hundred and fifty, and of cassia five hundred sickles by the weight of the sanctuary, of oil of olives the measure hin, and you shall make the holy oil of unction, an ointment compounded after the art of the perfumer, and therewith you shall anoint the tabernacle of the testimony, and the ark of the testament, and the table with the vessels thereof, the candlestick and furniture thereof, the altars of incense, and of holocaust, and all the furniture that belongs to the service of them. And you shall sanctify all, and they shall be most holy, he that shall touch them shall be sanctified. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and shall sanctify them, that they may do the office of priesthood unto me. And you shall say to the children of Israel, This oil of unction shall be holy unto me throughout your generations. The flesh of man shall not be anointed therewith, and you shall make none other of the same composition, because it is sanctified, and shall be holy unto you. What mansoever shall compound such, and shall give thereof to a stranger, he shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord said to Moses, Take unto thee spices, stacti, and anica, galbanum of sweet savour, and the clearest frankincense, all shall be of equal weight. And you shall make incense compounded by the work of the perfumer, well tempered together, and pure, and most worthy of sanctification. And when you have beaten all into very small powder, you shall set of it before the tabernacle of the testimony, in the place where I will appear to thee. Most holy shall this incense be unto you. 
You shall not make such a composition for your own uses, because it is holy to the Lord. What man soever shall make the like, to enjoy the smell thereof, he shall perish out of his people. Chapter 31. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, I have called by name Besaleel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding, and knowledge in all manner of work, to devise whatsoever may be artificially made of gold, and silver, and brass, of marble, and precious stones, and variety of wood. And I have given him for his companion Oliab, the son of Akisamech, of the tribe of Dan. And I have put wisdom in the heart of every skillful man, that they may make all things which I have commanded thee, the tabernacle of the covenant, and the ark of the testimony, and the propitiatory, that is over it, and all the vessels of the tabernacle, and the table and the vessels thereof, the most pure candlestick with the vessels thereof, and the altars of incense, and of holocaust, and all their vessels, the laver with its foot, the holy vestments in the ministry for Aaron the priest and for his sons, that they may execute their office, about the sacred things, the oil of unction, and the incense of spices in the sanctuary, all things which I have commanded thee, shall they make. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, See that you keep my Sabbath, because it is a sign between me and you in your generations that you may know that I am the Lord, who sanctify you. Keep you my Sabbath, for it is holy unto you, he that shall profane it, shall be put to death, he that shall do any work in it, his soul shall perish out of the midst of his people. Six days shall you do work, in the seventh day is the Sabbath, the rest holy to the Lord. Every one that shall do any work on this day, shall die. Let the children of Israel keep the Sabbath, and celebrate it in their generations. It is an everlasting covenant between me and the children of Israel, and a perpetual sign. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and in the seventh he ceased from work. And the Lord, when he had ended these words in Mount Sinai, gave to Moses two stone tables of testimony, written with the finger of God. Chapter 32. The people, seeing that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, gathered together against Aaron and said, Arise, make us gods, that may go before us. For as to this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has befallen him. And Aaron said to them, Take the golden earrings from the ears of your wives, and your sons and daughters, and bring them to me. The people did what he had commanded, bringing the earrings to Aaron. When he had received them, he fashioned them by founder's work and made of them a molten calf. They said, These are thy gods, O Israel, that have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it and made proclamation by a crier's voice, saying, Tomorrow is the solemnity of the Lord. Rising in the morning, they offered holocausts and peace victims, and the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go, get thee down. Thy people, which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt, hath sinned. They have quickly strayed from the way which thou didst show them, and they have made to themselves a molten calf, and have adored it, and sacrificing victims to it, have said, These are thy gods, O Israel, that have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Again the Lord said to Moses, I see that this people is stiff-necked. Let me alone, that my wrath may be kindled against them, and that I may destroy them, and I will make of thee a great nation. But Moses besought the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, is thy indignation enkindled against thy people, whom thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power, and with a mighty hand? Let not the Egyptians say, I beseech thee, he craftily brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains, and destroy them from the earth. Let thy anger cease, and be appeased upon the wickedness of thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou sworest by thy own self, saying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and this whole land that I have spoken of, I will give to your seed, and you shall possess it forever. The Lord was appeased from doing the evil which he had spoken against his people. Moses returned from the mount, carrying the two tables of the testimony in his hand, written on both sides, and made by the work of God. The writing also of God was graven in the tables. Josue, hearing the noise of the people shouting, said to Moses, The noise of battle is heard in the camp. But he answered, It is not the cry of men encouraging to fight, nor the shout of men compelling to flee, but I hear the voice of singers. When he came nigh to the camp, he saw the calf and the dances. Being very angry, he threw the tables out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mount. Laying hold of the calf which they had made, he burnt it, and beat it to powder, which he strewed into water, and gave thereof to the children of Israel to drink. He said to Aaron, What has this people done to thee, that thou shouldst bring upon them a most heinous sin? He answered him, Let not my lord be offended, for thou knowest this people, that they are prone to evil. They said to me, Make us gods, that may go before us. 
For as to this Moses, who brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, we know not what is befallen him. And I said to them, Which of you hath any gold? And they took and brought it to me, and I cast it into the fire, and this calf came out. When Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had stripped them by occasion of the shame of the filth, and had set them naked among their enemies, then standing in the gate of the camp, he said, If any man be on the Lord's side, let him join with me. All the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. He said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword upon his thigh. Go, and return from gate to gate through the midst of the camp, and let every man kill his brother, and friend, and neighbor. The sons of Levi did according to the words of Moses, and there were slain that day about three and twenty thousand men. Moses said, You have consecrated your hands this day to the Lord, every man in his son and in his brother, that a blessing may be given to you. When the next day was come, Moses spoke to the people, You have sinned a very great sin. I will go up to the Lord, if by any means I may be able to entreat him for your crime. Returning to the Lord, he said, I beseech thee, this people hath sinned a heinous sin, and they have made to themselves gods of gold. Either forgive them this trespass, or if thou do not, strike me out of the book that thou hast written. The Lord answered him, He that hath sinned against me, him will I strike out of my book. But go thou, and lead this people whither I have told thee. My angel shall go before thee. And I in the day of revenge will visit this sin also of theirs. The Lord therefore struck the people for the guilt, on occasion of the calf which Aaron had made. Chapter 33. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go, get thee up from this place, thou and thy people which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt, into the land concerning which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To thy seed I will give it. And I will send an angel before thee, that I may cast out the Shannonite, and the Amorite, and the Hethite, and the Pharisite, and the Hevite, and the Jebusite, that thou mayst enter into the land that floweth with milk and honey. For I will not go up with thee, because thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I destroy thee in the way. And the people hearing these very bad tidings, mourned, and no man put on his ornaments according to custom. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, Thou art a stiff-necked people, once I shall come up in the midst of thee, and shall destroy thee. Now presently lay aside thy ornaments, that I may know what to do to thee. So the children of Israel laid aside their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Moses also taking the tabernacle, pitched it without the camp afar off, and called the name thereof, the Tabernacle of the Covenant. And all the people, that had any question, went forth to the Tabernacle of the Covenant, without the camp. And when Moses went forth to the Tabernacle, all the people rose up, and every one stood in the door of his pavilion, and they beheld the back of Moses, till he went into the Tabernacle. And when he was gone into the Tabernacle of the Covenant, the pillar of the cloud came down, and stood at the door, and he spoke with Moses. And all saw that the pillar of the cloud stood at the door of the tabernacle. And they stood and worshipped at the doors of their tent. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as a man is wont to speak to his friend. And when he returned into the camp, his servant Hosea, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not from the tabernacle. And Moses said to the Lord, Thou commandest me to lead forth this people, and thou dost not let me know whom thou wilt send with me, especially whereas thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found favor in my sight. If therefore I have found favor in thy sight, shew me thy face, that I may know thee, and may find grace before thy eyes, look upon thy people this nation. And the Lord said, My face shall go before thee, and I will give thee rest. And Moses said, If thou thyself dost not go before, bring us not out of this place. For how shall we be able to know, I and thy people, that we have found grace in thy sight, unless thou walk with us, that we may be glorified by all people that dwell upon the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This word also, which thou hast spoken, will I do, for thou hast found grace before me, and thee I have known by name. And he said, Shew me thy glory. He answered, I will shew thee all good, and I will proclaim in the name of the Lord before thee, and I will have mercy on whom I will, and I will be merciful to whom it shall please me. And again he said, Thou canst not see my face, for man shall not see me, and live. And again he said, Behold there is a place with me, and thou shalt stand upon the rock. And when my glory shall pass, I will set thee in a hole of the rock, and protect thee with my right hand till I pass, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face thou canst not see. Chapter 34. And after this he said, H.E.W. the two tables of stone like unto the former, and I will write upon them the words, which were in the tables, which thou brokest. Be ready in the morning, that thou mayst forthwith go up into Mount Sinai, and thou shalt stand with me upon the top of the mount. Let no man go up with thee, and let not any man be seen throughout all the mount, 
neither let the oxen nor the sheep feed over against it. Then he cut out two tables of stone, such as had been before, and rising very early he went up into the Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, carrying with him the tables. And when the Lord was come down in a cloud, Moses stood with him, calling upon the name of the Lord. And when he passed before him, he said, O the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, patient and of much compassion, and true, who keepest mercy unto thousands, who takest away iniquity, and wickedness, and sin, and no man of himself is innocent before thee. Who renderest the iniquity of the fathers to the children, and to the grandchildren unto the third and fourth generation? And Moses making haste, bowed down prostrate unto the earth, and adoring, said, If I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, I beseech thee that thou wilt go with us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and take away our iniquities and sin, and possess us. The Lord answered, I will make a covenant in the sight of all, I will do signs such as were never seen upon the earth, nor in any nations, that this people, in the midst of whom thou art, may see the terrible work of the Lord which I will do. Observe all things which this day I command thee, I myself will drive out before thy face the Amorite, and the Shannonite, and the Hethite, and the Pharisite, and the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Beware thou never join in friendship with the inhabitants of that land, which may be thy ruin, but destroy their altars, break their statues and cut down their groves, adore not any strange god. The Lord his name is Jealous, he is a jealous god. Make no covenant with the men of those countries, lest, when they have committed fornication with their gods, and have adored their idols, some one call thee to eat of the things sacrificed. Neither shalt thou take of their daughters a wife for thy son, lest after they themselves have committed fornication, they make thy sons also to commit fornication with their gods. Thou shalt not make to thyself any molten gods. All of the male kind that openeth the womb, shall be mine. Of all beasts, both of oxen and of sheep, it shall be mine. The firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a sheep, but if thou wilt not give a price for it, it shall be slain. The firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, neither shalt thou appear before me empty. Six days shalt thou work, the seventh day thou shalt cease to plough and to reap. Thou shalt keep the feast of weeks with the firstfruits of the corn of thy wheat harvest, and the feast when the time of the year returneth that all things are laid in. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear in the sight of the Almighty Lord the God of Israel. For when I shall have taken away the nations from thy face, and shall have enlarged thy borders, no man shall lie in wait against thy land when thou shalt go up, and appear in the sight of the Lord thy God thrice in a year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice upon leaven, neither shall there remain in the morning anything of the victim of the solemnity of the face. The first of the fruits of thy ground thou shalt offer in the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not boil a kid in the milk of his dam. And the Lord said to Moses, Write thee these words, by which I have made a covenant both with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, he neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote upon the tables the ten words of the covenant. And when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai, he held the two tables of the testimony, and he knew not that his face was horned from the conversation of the Lord. And Aaron and the children of Israel seeing the face of Moses horned, were afraid to come near. And being called by him, they returned, both Aaron and the rulers of the congregation. And after that he spoke to them, and all the children of Israel came to him, and he gave them in commandment all that he had heard of the Lord on Mount Sinai. And having done speaking, he put a veil upon his face. But when he went into the Lord, and spoke with him, he took it away until he came forth, and then he spoke to the children of Israel all things that had been commanded him. And they saw that the face of Moses when he came out was horned, but he covered his face again, if at any time he spoke to them. Chapter 35 and all the multitude of the children of Israel being gathered together, he said to them, These are the things which the Lord hath commanded to be done. Six days you shall do work, the seventh day shall be holy unto you, the Sabbath and the rest of the Lord, he that shall do any work on it, shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in any of your habitations on the Sabbath day. And Moses said to all the assembly of the children of Israel, This is the word the Lord hath commanded, saying, Set aside with you firstfruits to the Lord. Let every one that is willing and hath a ready heart, offer them to the Lord, gold, and silver, and brass, violet and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine linen, goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and violet colored skins, set in wood, and oil to maintain lights, and to make ointment, and most sweet incense, onyx stones, and precious stones, for the adorning of the ephod and the rational. Whosoever of you is wise, let him come, and make that which the Lord hath commanded to wit, the tabernacle, and the roof thereof, and the cover, the rings, and the board work with the bars, the pillars, and the sockets, the ark and the staves, the propitiatory, and the veil that is drawn before it, the table with the bars and the vessels, and the loaves of proposition, 
the candlestick to bear up the lights, the vessels thereof and the lamps, and the oil for the nourishing of fires, the altar of incense, and the bars, and the oil of unction, and the incense of spices, the hanging at the door of the tabernacle the altar of holocaust, and its grate of brass, with the bars and vessels thereof, the laver and its foot, the curtains of the court, with the pillars and the sockets, the hanging in the doors of the entry, the pins of the tabernacle, and of the court, with their little cords, the vestments that are to be used in the ministry of the sanctuary, the vesture of Aaron the high priest, and of his sons, to do the office of priesthood to me. And all the multitude of the children of Israel going out from the presence of Moses, offered first fruits to the Lord with a most ready and devout mind, to make the work of the tabernacle of the testimony. Whatever was necessary to the service and to the holy vestments, both men and women gave bracelets and earrings, rings and tablets, every vessel of gold was set aside to be offered to the Lord. If any man had violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, and violet-colored skins, metal of silver and brass, they offered it to the Lord, and set him wood for divers' uses. The skillful women also gave such things as they had spun, violet, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, giving all of their own accord. But the princes offered onyx stones, and precious stones, for the ephod and the rational, and spices and oil for the lights, and for the preparing of ointment, and to make the incense of most sweet savor. All, both men and women, with devout mind offered gifts, that the works might be done which the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses. All the children of Israel dedicated voluntary offerings to the Lord. And Moses said to the children of Israel, Behold, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and hath filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding, and knowledge, and all learning, to devise and to work in gold and silver and brass, and in engraving stones, and in carpenter's work. Whatsoever can be devised artificially, he hath given in his heart, Oliab also, the son of Akisamech, of the tribe of Dan. Both of them hath he instructed with wisdom, to do carpenter's work, and tapestry, and embroidery in blue and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine linen, and to weave all things, and to invent all new things. Chapter 36. Bessalel, Oliab, and every wise man, to whom the Lord gave wisdom and understanding to know how to work artificially, made the things necessary for the uses of the sanctuary, which the Lord commanded. When Moses had called them, and every skillful man, to whom the Lord had given wisdom, and such as of their own accord had offered themselves to the making of the work, he delivered all the offerings of the children of Israel unto them. While they were earnest about the work, the people daily in the morning offered their vows. The workmen, being constrained to come, said to Moses, The people offer more than is necessary. Moses, therefore, commanded proclamation to be made by the crier's voice, Let neither man nor woman offer any more for the work of the sanctuary. And so they ceased from offering gifts, because the things that were offered did suffice, and were too much. All the men that were wise of heart, to accomplish the work of the tabernacle, made ten curtains of twisted fine linen, and violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, with varied work, and the art of embroidering. The length of one curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth four. All the curtains were of the same size. He joined five curtains, one to another, and the other five he coupled one to another. He made also loops of violet in the edge of one curtain on both sides, and in the edge of the other curtain in like manner, that the loops might meet one against another, and might be joined each with the other. Whereupon also he cast fifty rings of gold, that might catch the loops of the curtains, and they might be made one tabernacle. He made also eleven curtains of goat's hair, to cover the roof of the tabernacle. One curtain was thirty cubits long, and four cubits broad. All the curtains were of one measure. Five of which he joined apart, and the other six apart. He made fifty loops in the edge of one curtain, and fifty in the edge of another curtain, that they might be joined one to another. Fifty buckles of brass where with the roof might be knit together, that of all the curtains there might be made one covering. He made also a cover for the tabernacle of ram skins dyed red, and another cover over that of violet skins. He made also the boards of the tabernacle of Sedim wood standing. The length of one board was ten cubits, and the breadth was one cubit and a half. There were two mortises throughout every board, that one might be joined to the other. In this manner, he made for all the boards of the tabernacle. Of which twenty were at the south side southward, with forty sockets of silver, two sockets were put under one board on the two sides of the corners, where the mortises of the sides end in the corners. At that side also of the tabernacle, that looks towards the north, he made twenty boards, with forty sockets of silver, two sockets for every board. But against the west, to wit, at that side of the tabernacle, which looks to the sea, he made six boards, and two others at each corner of the tabernacle behind. 
which were also joined from beneath unto the top, and went together into one joint. Thus he did on both sides at the corners. So there were in all eight boards, and they had sixteen sockets of silver, to wit, two sockets under every board. He made also bars of sedum wood, five to hold together the boards of one side of the tabernacle, and five others to join together the boards of the other side, and besides these, five other bars at the west side of the tabernacle towards the sea. He made also another bar, that might come by the midst of the boards from corner to corner. The boards themselves he overlaid with gold casting for them sockets of silver. Their rings he made of gold, through which the bars might be drawn, and he covered the bars themselves with plates of gold. He made also a veil of violet, and purple, scarlet and fine twisted linen, varied and distinguished with embroidery, and four pillars of sedum wood, which with their heads he overlaid with gold, casting for them sockets of silver. He made also a hanging in the entry of the tabernacle of violet, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen, with the work of an embroiderer. Five pillars with their heads, which he covered with gold, and their sockets he cast of brass. Chapter 37. Besaleel also made the Ark of Sedum wood. It was overlaid with the purest gold, both inside and outside. He made a crown of gold around it and cast four rings of gold at its four corners. Two rings were on one side and two on the other. He made bars of sedum wood, which he overlaid with gold, and put them into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. He also made the propitiatory, that is, the oracle, of the purest gold. He set two cherubims of beaten gold on the two sides of the propitiatory. One cherub was at the top of one side, and the other cherub at the top of the other side. The two cherubims were at the two ends of the propitiatory, spreading their wings, covering the propitiatory, and looking towards each other and towards it. He also made the table of sedum wood and overlaid it with the finest gold. He made a golden ledge around it and to the ledge itself, he made a polished crown of gold. He cast four rings of gold, which he put in the four corners at each foot of the table, against the crown. He put the bars into them so that the table might be carried. The bars themselves were made of sedum wood and overlaid with gold. He made the vessels for the various uses of the table, dishes, bowls, cups, and censers of pure gold, wherein the libations are to be offered. He also made the candlestick of beaten work of the finest gold. From the shaft, its branches, its cups, bowls, and lilies came out. The work of the six branches that went out from the shaft of the candlestick was equal. In the shaft itself were bowls under two branches in three places, which together made six branches going out from one shaft. Both the bowls and the branches were of the same, all beaten work of the purest gold. He also made the seven lamps with their snuffers, and the vessels where the snuffings were to be put out, of the purest gold. The candlestick with all its vessels weighed a talent of gold. He also made the altar of incense of sedum wood, being foursquare on every side, and in height, from the corners of which went out horns. He overlaid it with the purest gold, with its grate, the sides, and the horns. He made a crown of gold around it, and two golden rings under the crown at each side, that the bars might be put into them, and the altar be carried. The bars themselves were also made of sedum wood, and overlaid with plates of gold. He compounded also the oil for the ointment of sanctification, and incense of the purest spices, according to the work of a perfumer. Chapter 38. He also made the altar of holocaust of sedum wood, square and tall. The horns went out from the corners, and he overlaid it with plates of brass. For the uses thereof, he prepared diverse vessels of brass, cauldrons, tongs, flesh hooks, pot hooks, and firepans. He made the grate thereof of brass, in the manner of a net, and under it in the midst of the altar, a hearth. He cast rings at the ends of the net at the top, to put in bars to carry it. He made the bars of sedum wood, and overlaid them with plates of brass. He drew them through the rings that stood out in the sides of the altar. The altar itself was not solid, but hollow, of boards, and empty within. He also made the laver of brass, with the foot thereof, of the mirrors of the women that watched at the door of the tabernacle. He also made the court, in the south side whereof were hangings of fine twisted linen. Pillars of brass with their sockets, the heads of the pillars, and the whole graving of the work, of silver. In like manner at the north side, the hangings, the pillars, and the sockets and heads of the pillars were of the same measure, and work and metal. But on the side that looked to the west, there were hangings, pillars of brass with their sockets, and the heads of the pillars, and all the graving of the work, of silver. Moreover, towards the east he prepared hangings. Some of which were on one side with pillars, and their sockets. And on the other side, for between the two he made the entry of the tabernacle, there were hangings equally, and pillars, and as many sockets. All the hangings of the court were woven with twisted linen. The sockets of the pillars were of brass, and their heads with all their gravings of silver. He overlaid the pillars of the court also with silver. 
he made in the entry thereof an embroidered hanging of violet, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen, that was long, and high, according to the measure of all the hangings of the court. The pillars in the entry were four, with sockets of brass, and their heads engravings of silver. The pins also of the tabernacle and of the court round about he made of brass. These are the instruments of the tabernacle of the testimony, which were counted according to the commandment of Moses, in the ceremonies of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest, which Besaleel, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah, had made, as the Lord commanded by Moses. Having for his companion Oliab, the son of Akisamech, of the tribe of Dan, who also was an excellent artificer in wood, and worker in tapestry and embroidery in violet, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. All the gold that was spent in the work of the sanctuary, and that was offered in gifts, was according to the standard of the sanctuary. It was offered by them that went to be numbered, from twenty years old and upwards, of men able to bear arms. There were moreover of silver, whereof were cast the sockets of the sanctuary, and of the entry where the veil hangeth. Sockets were made, one being reckoned for every socket. He made the heads of the pillars, which also he overlaid with silver. There were offered of brass also, and sickles besides of which were cast the sockets in the entry of the tabernacle of the testimony, and the altar of brass with the grate thereof, and also the vessels that belonged to the use thereof. The sockets of the court as well round about as in the entry thereof, and the pins of the tabernacle, and of the court round about. Chapter 39. And he made, of violet and purple, scarlet and fine linen, the vestments for Aaron to wear when he ministered in the holy places, as the Lord commanded Moses. So he made an ephod of gold, violet, and purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen, with embroidered work, and he cut thin plates of gold, and drew them small into threads, that they might be twisted with the woof of the foresaid colors, and two borders coupled one to the other in the top on either side, and a girdle of the same colors, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He prepared also two onyx stones, fast set and closed in gold, and graven, by the art of a lapidary, with the names of the children of Israel, and he set them in the sides of the ephod, for a memorial of the children of Israel, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made also a rational with embroidered work, according to the work of the ephod, of gold, violet, purple, and scarlet twice dyed, and fine twisted linen, four square, double, of the measure of a span. And he set four rows of precious stones in it. In the first row was a sardius, a topaz, an emerald. In the second, a carbuncle, a sapphire, and a jasper. In the third, a ligurius, an agate, and an amethyst. In the fourth, a chrysolite, an onyx, and a beryl, set and enclosed in gold by their rows. And the twelve stones, were engraved with the names of the twelve tribes of Israel, each one with its several name. They made also in the rational little chains, linked one to another, of the purest gold, and two hooks, and as many rings of gold. And they set the rings on either side of the rational, on which rings the two golden chains should hang, which they put into the hooks that stood out in the corners of the ephod. These both before and behind so answered one another, that the ephod and the rational were bound together, being fastened to the girdle, and strongly coupled with rings, which a violet fillet joined, lest they should flag loose, and be moved one from the other, as the Lord commanded Moses. They made also the tunic of the ephod all of violet, and a hole for the head in the upper part at the middle, and a woven border round about the hole, and beneath at the feet pomegranates of violet, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen, and little bells of the purest gold, which they put between the pomegranates at the bottom of the tunic round about, to wit, a bell of gold, and a pomegranate, wherewith the high priest went adorned, when he discharged his ministry, as the Lord had commanded. Moses. They made also fine linen tunics with woven work for Aaron and his sons, and mitres with their little crowns of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine linen, and a girdle of fine twisted linen, violet, purple, and scarlet twice dyed, of embroidery work, as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made also the plate of sacred veneration of the purest gold, and they wrote on it with the engraving of a lapidary, the holy of the Lord, and they fastened it to the mitre with a violet fillet, as the Lord had commanded Moses. So all the work of the tabernacle and of the roof of the testimony was finished, and the children of Israel did all things which the Lord had commanded Moses. And they offered the tabernacle, and the roof, and the whole furniture, the rings, the boards, the bars, the pillars and their sockets, the cover of ram skins dyed red, and the other cover of violet skins, the veil, the ark, the bars, the propitiatory, the table, with the vessels thereof, and the loaves of proposition, the candlestick, the lamps, and the furniture of them, with the oil, the altar of gold, and the ointment, and the incense of spices, and the hanging in the entry of the 
tabernacle, the altar of brass, the grate, the bars, and all the vessels thereof, the laver, with the foot thereof, the hangings of the court, and the pillars, with their sockets, the hanging in the entry of the court, and the little cords, and the pins thereof. Nothing was wanting of the vessels, that were commanded to be made for the ministry of the tabernacle, and for the roof of the covenant. The vestments also, which the priests, to wit, Aaron and his sons, use in the sanctuary, the children of Israel offered, as the Lord had commanded. And when Moses saw all things finished, he blessed them. Chapter 40. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, thou shalt set up the tabernacle of the testimony. Thou shalt put the ark in it and let down the veil before it. Thou shalt bring in the table and set upon it the things that are commanded according to the right. The candlestick shall stand with its lamps. Thou shalt put the hanging in the entry of the tabernacle and before it the altar of holocaust. The laver between the altar and the tabernacle, thou shalt fill it with water. Thou shalt encompass the court with hangings and the entry thereof. Thou shalt take the oil of unction and anoint the tabernacle with its vessels, that they may be sanctified. The altar of holocaust and all its vessels, the laver with its foot, thou shalt consecrate all with the oil of unction, that they may be most holy. Thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of the testimony, and having washed them with water, thou shalt put on them the holy vestments, that they may minister to me, and that the unction of them may prosper to an everlasting priesthood. Moses did all that the Lord had commanded. So, in the first month of the second year, the first day of the month, the tabernacle was set up. Moses reared it up, placed the boards and the sockets and the bars, and set up the pillars. He spread the roof over the tabernacle, putting over it a cover, as the Lord had commanded. He put the testimony in the ark, thrusting bars underneath, and the oracle above. When he had brought the ark into the tabernacle, he drew the veil before it to fulfill the commandment of the Lord. He set the table in the tabernacle of the testimony, at the north side, without the veil, setting there in order the loaves of proposition, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the candlestick also in the tabernacle of the testimony, over against the table on the south side, placing the lamps in order, according to the precept of the Lord. He set also the altar of gold under the roof of the testimony, over against the veil, and burnt upon it the incense of spices, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put also the hanging in the entry of the tabernacle of the testimony, and the altar of holocaust in the entry of the testimony, offering the holocaust, and the sacrifices upon it, as the Lord had commanded. He set the laver between the tabernacle of the testimony and the altar, filling it with water. Moses and Aaron, and his sons, washed their hands and feet when they went into the tabernacle of the covenant, and went to the altar, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set up also the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, drawing the hanging in the entry thereof. After all things were perfected, the cloud covered the tabernacle of the testimony, and the glory of the Lord filled it. Neither could Moses go into the tabernacle of the covenant, the cloud covering all things, and the majesty of the Lord shining, for the cloud had covered all. If at any time the cloud removed from the tabernacle, the children of Israel went forward by their troops. If it hung over, they remained in the same place. For the cloud of the Lord hung over the tabernacle by day, and a fire by night, in the sight of all the children of Israel throughout all their mansions. Thank you.